So we'll show you removal of the left main lift cylinder. Uh, right, right side is a tad easier only because the right side cylinder doesn't have the two travel sensors on them. Otherwise, it's identical, only a mirror image. So we need to show you only one. And uh, what we'll do is first take the bottom mounting pin out. Actually, it goes out that way. Then uh, we take the uh, we retract the cylinder um, shaft, take the uh, hoses and the travel sensor off, and take the top mounting pin out. And then we swap in the replacement cylinder by first putting on the travel sensors and the hoses, then the pins, and that is that. Let me show you in detail. So first, the um, mounting pins are six millimeter pins. The upper one is coming through from the inside, so it has a retaining clip on top. The way you undo the retaining clip is with a small flat screwdriver. You stick the screwdriver uh, through, turn it a little bit, that opens up the pin, and the pin will then pull straight out. Not the pin, the uh, clip, excuse me. So got the upper clip out, we do the same thing on the lower clip. We want to rotate it such that we can put our screwdriver in the proper position. Turn it such as to open the clip and the clip is off. Now um, there's a bit of a trick on the bottom here. You see there is insulation, sound insulation really, from the uh, fender rear wheel well. And the this uh, mounting pin can have a hard time uh, getting enough clearance unless you carve out uh, the insulation as far as it needs to go. So we have done that already. We have, well, we've basically dug with a screwdriver, honestly. We first started pushing this pin and noticed, wow, it's starting to wedge up on this insulation. So we just carved out some insulation, pulled the pin back, and now we can, um, as soon as the pin is back far enough, now we can pull out the bottom of this main lift cylinder. Um, if you're having trouble, uh, just in case the sheet metal in your car is unusual and the fender should be unusually high, then you could, with a 13 millimeter wrench, undo this bolt here and loosen this screw and stick something under this part of the soft top frame. You're not going to misalign the top, you just want to, might, might possibly have to pull this bracket up a little bit to get more clearance for the pin. Um, hopefully you don't need it, but uh, in case you get stuck, you know what to do. So I'll fasten this again, I'll tighten it down later, and I still have enough clearance to pull the bottom of this cylinder out. Now there's a little white washer here on the outside uh, that is jamming the cylinder in the bracket really tightly. My personal opinion is you really don't need this washer. There are bushings on both sides and this cylinder is not going to rattle. This was a little bit over engineered. It's a bit of a pain to get this washer back in together with the cylinder. Let me show you how you would be putting it back in. We just leave this pin in place and later when the replacement cylinder goes in we want to have this washer lined up with the bushing. Ah, my pin is moving a little bit so I didn't pull it back far enough. And you just have to keep wiggling and um, making sure the cylinder is lined up. Well, all I was trying to say is uh, the way you get, the only way to get this washer back in is together with the cylinder. I'll show you when we replace this. Got a little bit ahead of myself here. So now you notice we have to feed the wires and hoses through a little bit to get enough clearance. Now we can push the shaft in or push the cylinder towards the shaft. I'm doing that just to get a little bit more fluid. 
out of the cylinder. You see my hand is getting oily because the cylinder is leaking on the bottom. So for that, I'll grab some paper towels so I don't get the rest of the car dirty and have the paper towels ready anyway for once I remove the hoses. Now, two ways to go. You could remove the hoses now. Well, may as well do that and then we'll uh, remove the top mounting clip last. We can rotate the cylinder far enough to uh, remove the hoses. Now, before I take the hoses off and have a bit of an oily mess here, I want to show you that there are two travel sensors on this cylinder. It is important that you don't mix up the upper and the lower one. It's kind of difficult to shove the to turn the wiring harness around such that the lower sensor ends up on top, but I want to just point out that normally the harness is such that the shorter wire is on the bottom sensor and that will um, make sure they're actually giving the proper sense, uh, signals because the lower sensor tells the computer when the shaft is retracted all the way, the upper tells the computer when the shaft is uh, extended all the way. Uh, these sensors are hall sensors, they are measuring the permeability of a magnetic field, which means, that's a fancy word, it really only means ultimately the magnetic field sensed from this sensor that has a magnet in it changes once the steel piston in the cylinder comes close. That's how the computer tells, uh, knows that the uh, shaft is fully extended or fully retracted. So these sensors practically sense the presence of the piston on this uh, shaft um, via a fancy method. So now let's take the hoses out that, that um, want to point this out by the way. We have hoses 11 and 12 here. General rule on these cylinders, the odd hose number is always on the shaft end. The even one is on the blunt end of the cylinder. The, cil the hoses are fastened in place with these stainless steel clips that uh, slide in the cylinder's rail. You slide the clip out of the way and you can pull the hose out. Let's see if I can get my screwdriver in a corner here, right between the hose fitting and the clip. It's moving, but my corner is not, the gap in there is not quite big enough, so I'll cheat a little bit and tap on here and try to grab in there again. Eventually I'll have a gap big enough to be able to wedge this out or I cheat the way I did it right now by just tapping on the screwdriver. So let me pull this clip out all the way, put it in a safe place up here. Get some more paper towels under the cylinder so I don't get this beautiful car any oilier than it already was. And the hose pulls straight out. We do the same thing on the bottom. I don't see a big enough gap to put the screwdriver in between the clip and the fitting, so I do the same thing that I did on top. I just tap on it and there goes the clip. Put it next to its little brother. Pull the hose out. There we go, we got both hoses out. Now we're down to the travel sensors. Now the travel sensors are just plastic housings that are clipping into these gaps on the cylinder. So my favorite way is to first try and wiggle them loose. Well, these guys are not moving much, so I very carefully, gently wedge my screwdriver in here under the clip, push it up. Same here. We don't want to be rough on them because inside these sensors are uh, integrated circuits um, with a magnet on top of them that have a hall sensor in them and that again does this fancy detection scheme. So we have all the hoses and uh, travel sensors removed. Now you will notice that the upper 
mounting pin is hitting this part of the frame. Uh, so in order to take this pin out, we actually have to retract the top, oh, at least a third of the way. You can actually, it's nice to have somebody help you with this, but you can do it uh, on your own. It's only a little bit hard to film. Um, all we have to do is lift the top up a third of the way and uh, then uh, there's enough clearance to pull the pin out. So let me uh, get the support off on the other side and then I'll just quickly, quick, excuse me, quickly pull that pin out. By taking the support out on this side, I meant just my little cardboard tube that was holding up the rear bow. Now I'm coming around, lifting my top up a little and there I am, have enough clearance to get the pin out, put the top up again, put my support back in. And here is my upper cylinder pin removed and the, the cylinder is out now. Don't just move the shaft up and down now um, or you'll have fluid squirting out. Um, cycle the shaft over a garbage can a couple times to get all the fluid out. Then we connect our the top of the replacement cylinder freshly rebuilt by Top Hydraulics made to last well, made to outlast your car, we hope. This should last 30 to 50 years if um, under normal circumstances if you don't put the wrong fluid in there or uh, something else really weird happens. I will take my support out again, cut my pin ready. I'll already put this pin in here partially, lift up the top again and uh, wiggle things around until this pin is properly inserted again. Now I noticed that I was going a little bit too fast here. I'm improvising on the spot. So here's a small detail. When the pin was pulled out towards the inside with the top partially extended, um, ultimately once the top was moved back, these inner and outer forks on the uh, top pin got misaligned a little bit. Um, the outer fork is actually only there to pull the cable for the flaps on the end of the tonneau cover, meaning the hinge covers. And uh, I would recommend that you line these guys up again after you've uh, taken the tension out of this tonneau cover. Line these guys up and put the pin in part way from, uh, from the outside. That way uh, you can already get the cylinder back in here and later put your clip on. Before we do that, let's uh, use a little bit more freedom here and first attach the travel sensors and the hoses. Really easy. The travel sensors just um, clip back into place. One and two. And you want to make sure that they're in all the way, that there's no major gap on the bottom of these uh, travel sensors. Then. Uh, remember what I said about the hose numbers, number 12 on the bottom, on the blunt end. Now here is the trick. The O-ring for the hoses has to be put, just slid onto the bottom end of the tube of this hose. Then the hose gets pushed into the cylinder 
easy, careful, st at a straight angle. You don't want to come in at an odd angle or force it in, or you will be uh, pinching this O-ring. Now, Top Hydraulics always sends um, three O-rings with each cylinder. That is one per port and one spare in case you dropped an O-ring. And as long as you have pushed this fitting in straight with the O-ring on it first, um, this should be fine and you can now secure the hose in place by sliding the clip black back on, giving it a push, click, it's in place. The lower hose is in place. Now let's do the upper one again. Put on the O-ring. Here we go, just pushed onto the tube. Now we try to push this hose into the cylinder nice and straight no forcing it it's totally easy now we put the clip on give it a little tap and it is almost completely in place yeah the hammer doesn't quite do the job so i'll do the last bit of push with the screwdriver, there we are, it's fully clicked into place. We can attach the top first by first extending the shaft, holding the shaft in place and wiggling here until the pin is in. Now notice that I push the pin in from the outside. There's enough clearance here to put the pin in on the outside and uh, then push this clip on, it's back in place. Cool. Now we go back to the bottom. And on the bottom, we could also push the pin in from the outside if you find, if you find that you get stuck here. Now, um, notice that this pin is a little bit wedged, so we may have to massage and pound on it a little bit to really get it through the bottom of the cylinder. Now I will also try to insert the washer together together with a cylinder and uh, need to create enough clearance here. So if we put both in together and we use a small screwdriver first to wiggle around here and line everything up properly. Then we'll use a slightly bigger one just because that'll line it up better. Then it's down to getting the pin through the washer. The washer may easily uh, be a little bit in the way but more likely the um, retaining ring groove in the pin can easily get cogged inside this sheet metal. Um, I would suggest that you just be a little bit brave and uh, pound on the end of this pin uh, first down then forward to get it through. If all else fails, two steps uh, are still left that will save you. One is uh, loosening this bolt and lifting up the bottom of this um, bracket or you simply put the pin through from the other side. Let's first see if I can get this into place easily. As soon as I find my larger screwdriver here. No, it's not quite happening because I just didn't line up that washer perfectly. So what I will do instead is pull the pin out all the way. Now I can put my screwdriver through. Now I can hopefully pound this pin through. There we go, it's through all the way. And I can simply carefully slide this bayonet style clip back onto the pin. It's back in place just as easily uh, put into place from this side. So um, 
I'll correct myself, it's best to just push the pin through from the inside, makes the job a lot easier. Just learn something on the spot. So there we are, we have replaced the left main lift cylinder. Ta-da!